Tell mm-hmm. us how you met George. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I went to Japan. Um, oh, yeah? Uh, at the age of 14. Oh, yeah? My parents were there they uh-huh. the year before, but I wanted to finish some more schooling. Uh-huh. And so a neighbor of mine was um, taking her children to Japan, so my sister thought, well, you only have one more year of high school, so you better go with them. So uh, they took me, and oh. I met, my father met me in Yokohama, uh-huh. and then we went down to Hiroshima. Uh-huh. And then from Hiroshima, we went to my uncle's. He has a pharmacy in oh, Kobe. Yeah? It, town named Kape, which is about, well, uh-huh. I would say about one hour from Hiroshima. Mm-hmm. They had a house there. And mm-hmm. then I think we only lived there about three or four months. Mm-hmm. And then my, my uh, father said I'd better go to school again. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't know any Japanese. And so um, they had a missionary school there called Mission School mm-hmm. for all girls. Mm-hmm. And so um, they, there were about six of us, I think. There, was, there were so many that they... They got a tutor and gave us one year of um, of uh, studies uh-huh. teaching us Japanese before we entered um, a school. So out of the three of us, I, uh-huh. I passed. Oh. <laughs> I was one of the three, uh-huh. and I got into third year. And there's it's a five year school, uh-huh. and so um, I got a third year, and I went three, four, five, uh-huh. three years. Uh-huh. Then after schools, I went to take flower, and I went to take tea lessons, and <laughs> you know, became a what well, year uh, did you go there? I went to 37 on the Asano okay. Maru. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, 37. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, it took us uh, two weeks, I think, to mm-hmm. get there by boat. Oh, wow. Oh, maybe longer, I don't know. Yeah. We stopped in uh, Hawaii. Uh-huh. So, uh-huh. Um, when did you meet George? And then um, I went to school there, and then after school, my sister came to Japan and she says, Well, since so you're finished school, why don't you, uh, when you finish, I had only about three more months to go before I finished. And that was just before the war broke out. But she says uh, she got a job, she's RN, that got a job at Napa. She's thinking of take, going to Napa State Hospital. Mm-hmm. And she said, why don't you uh, go to Berkeley? And I said, well, that sounds good. I'll try <laughs> out for Berkeley. And then um, uh, war broke out. And then um, she said, no, you better stay there. The last letter came saying I should stay there. Uh-huh. And so I had to stay there, and then my whole life changed. I had to go to work, I had to support my two elderly people. See, I'm the fifth child of um, uh, of my parents. Uh-huh. And there's 17 years difference between my brother and myself. Mm. And so I stayed and took care of them. Uh-huh. So I worked, and I took, fortunately, I took typing in oh. high school in Riverside. And that brought, took me through all of my life. Mm-hmm. So you're from Riverside originally? I'm Riverside. I was born oh. and raised in Riverside. <laughs> wow. And then um, he's from Brawley. Yeah. And um, so I had a pretty good life until I went to Japan. And then um, when, after the war broke out, I had to work. It was mm-hmm. very hard. But I did typing. I did German typing. Mm-hmm. On the German typewriter, which is the same as American. Yeah. So all I had to do was just copy books. And they were experimenting soybeans to make material mm-hmm. and so all uh, I they mark out things and mm-hmm. I just typed and it was so easy and I enjoyed it and I worked and then um, was it it were it got so bad you know pretty soon there was no more food hardly mm-hmm. you know and my aunt uh, she had a little place and she says anytime I'm stuck it was took me one hour to go to work she said anytime I'm stuck she says just go to that place and she had rented a room. So mm-hmm. I went there and then the atomic bomb, the day of the day before the atomic bomb, I never was um, bitten by a mosquito. All my Nisei friends got <laughs> bit by mosquitoes. They used to have their legs wrapped and everything. I never, nothing happened like that to me. But that mo- day before I got bit by a mosquito on this foot. Mm-hmm. I couldn't put a shoe on, I couldn't put flip flops. I couldn't do anything. I thought, oh my God, I better stay home from mm-hmm. work. That morning they had the atomic at 820 or oh. something like that. Mm-hmm. I would have been on that. Uh-huh. Everyone that was working at 820 uh, on, that at that right? time almost died yeah. in my place. Mm-hmm. And so about three months, uh, three days later, they said atomic, the people were coming into that little town where I was, mm-hmm. and they were all tattered and everything, and clothes were hanging on, they were look dazed. And about three la- days later, I said, gee, I gotta look for my aunt that you know, had that place. She didn't come to that house. And so I said, I better go look. So I 
we had there's a streetcar that goes to the outskirts of Hiroshima. From there, you, the place was just devastated. Gone. It was mm -hmm. nothing. Gone. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. um, they told someone told me that way on the other side of town, uh, they're housing all the sick people and all uh, those mm -hmm. people that are dying there. So I walked by myself all the way across. I drank the water three mm. days after. I drank water and everything. Walking across it took me quite a long time to get there. And when I got there, I kept looking for her and I couldn't find her. But when I go, well, was going looking through one of the sheds, one lady called out my name and she says, "My name is Kobayashi. My name, maiden name." Mm. And I looked and I couldn't recognize her. She was all burnt mm -hmm. with atomic. And they all looked alike. They had her stomach was all puffy like this, uh -huh. all puffy, and um, uh, uh, they're all saying, water, water, but the people in charge says, don't give them water, mm -hmm. so, and this one girl says, could you stay with me until my folks come, would you let them know I'm here, so I said, sure, so I stayed there one week and took care of her, oh. and um, I'm real I'm scared at first, you know, because mm -hmm. I'd be jumping over dead bodies, and mm and everything and um, pretty soon it got to be nothing you know I just jumped over them they gave us one rice ball a day I think nah. I don't know how I survived <laughs> you were 18 no I was at that time I had graduated already okay mm -hmm. and so I was 20 no 18 I was yeah, yeah 14 15 16 17 yeah 18 mm. oh my god 18 or no. a heck of a sight. yeah mm. and so um, uh, then I was, pa as one morning when I was passing by one of the sheds where all, they just put all the dead people in this big shed. Mm. And then I hear a little bo bo voice, a little boy's voice says, help me, help me. And I looked and I said, what is your name? I said, what's, yeah. and he says, please write to my folks. So I said, what's your address? So I wrote the old, I guess I gave the address to the people in charge there. I don't know whether they came after him. I, mm. I don't take care of him. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 the girl I was taking care of, uh, one week later, I had written, and they uh, they came after her, and they put her on their back. There was no transportation, so they mm -hmm. put her on the back and took her home. I haven't heard from her since. Yeah. I don't know where she, yeah. I don't even remember her no. name, but she, mm -hmm. I knew she was from Hawaii. Uh -uh. Did you find your aunt, your aunt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I was going back, after I took care of her, I was going back there one week, and on the same train, you know, we had to walk clear to the train station, and then on the train going to that little uh, place where we had rented, uh, here comes my aunt running to me. <laughs> she says, I thought you died. I said, well, I thought you died. <laughs> and I, she says, I was sitting with a lady talking in the morning, and um, hibachi is one of these. Mm -hmm. They put uh -huh. coals in it. Mm -hmm. and, a stove. Uh-huh and they talk and sit there and talk. Mm -hmm. And she said that other lady died. Oh. But she says, everything came on me. And she said, I put my head to the side. I could see an opening. She's a fighter. She saw a little opening. So she said, I fought my way there and I got out of there. Mm -hmm. She said, I was worried about you because I know you're timid. I wasn't real timid at that time. <laughs> and she says, oh, we were happy. But that's how I was in the end yeah. of And then I got a job going to I, was, I first worked in Kyoto as a typist. Then we heard that they were hiring at this big first corps, military government first corps. Mm. So I said, well, I, want, I think I'll go over there and apply. <laughs> so my cousin took me there. And he's my mother's uh, oldest son's, uh, oldest brother's son. He took me over there because I was pretty young yet. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I applied at the military government, and I got the job. Mm -hmm. And so there were about ten of us mm -hmm. all lined up, and mm -hmm. they had to teach us all about military government uh, procedures. Mm -hmm. And so we had excellent, excellent teacher. He was a lieutenant, James W. Lane. I remember him. And then we were all, there were about ten of us, and then there was a little cubby hole on the, and there was George, oh. and he had a little room about half of this. <laughs> And it was strictly confidential, uh -huh. and we couldn't go in there. And he was the only one there, and he was taking care of that strictly confidential. <laughs> and so I went to my desk. They set me out the desk, and when I was just sitting down, here comes George. <laughs> 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 and 
and he introduced himself. So, love at first sight? Yeah, I guess it was for him. That's his personality. How did you process? Sorry, I'm sorry. Actually, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just talking about Joseph's personality. He's a tricky yeah, it was so you know, yeah. so good to me, and I never had that happen to me. Yeah. You know, he get me anything I wanted, <laughs> he did anything for me. <laughs> well, he so, took me in hand over there because mm -hmm. I had just started working at Thrifty when my store burnt down in the riot. Down, I was oh, working. In a, in a, yeah, I was working at uh, Washington and Central, and I, my they came and they burnt my store. Because I still got part of my license half burnt, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, so uh, I, I I left them, uh, no, waiting for them to call me to go back. You know, they called me and told me, "Where are you?" I was working part time out in Whitefront, out in West Covina. They said, "No, you, you work for fifty. Now you go back." And this when they sent me over to George over on Brooklyn Avenue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he took me in hand. How long, how long did you work there? Huh? At how long? Uh -huh. Oh, I guess <clears throat> not quite a year, but I, I think almost a year I worked over there. Really? Mm hmm. Oh. Yeah, we had. Uh, well, was Izzy there? Yeah. Izzy Chambers? Oh, yeah, that was nice. Chambers, yeah. Izzy Chambers there? No. That older, yeah. older man, the I, Jewish man? I don't, I don't remember. Uh huh. Yeah, we had. Uh, we had, I know one lady who planted trees for us in uh, uh, Israel. The, she was our relief pharmacist, and she had to get some time in. Oh, is so, that that uh, lady, that buxom lady? Yeah. Was she buxom? Uh -huh. George was telling me about yeah. buxom. Uh -huh. She yeah. had a big chest? And she planted trees for Did us. Did she have a big Israel. chest? Is that huh? the same one who had the big chest? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just so we know we're but, talking uh, about the same person. Yes, yeah, so, I know that's what Joe taught me before going out. And, what, SC? Uh, Are you SC too? Well, after I came out, I came back. I finished at Howard University in Washington, in D.C. I finished pharmacy there. And then I came out here and went, I took some courses at USC oh, and all that. Yeah, because yeah. that was the time when they gave the doctorate out. So uh, I took some courses there. We took, in order to take the board out here, because... Uh, Do you know uh, Wes Johnson? Mm -hmm. Wesley Johnson? Yes. Do you know him? Yeah. Uh -huh. Wesley Johnson? Mm -hmm. Wesley know Johnson, Wesley? I'm trying to remember him. I uh, had, him. His father had a big pharmacy in San Francisco, uh -huh. and he was George's classmate. Yeah. So we used to go to... I knew Wesley real well. We used to go there all the uh -huh. time for parties. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah? And then we used to look him up in San Francisco when we went to see uh -huh. him. Uh. So what did you do, Florence, when you came back from Japan? Why did you guys come back here? Because his mother, uh, she, her mother is a college grad, and so yeah. she's very much in, into mm -hmm. education. The father isn't, but the mother is, uh -huh. and she made him come back. And we didn't want to come back. We had such a good life there. <laughs> and uh, my first baby was born there, my daughter. Uh -huh. And so we came back, and we went to, they were in Chicago, so we went to Chicago. But we... Landed mm -hmm. in Seattle, came down to San Francisco where my brother was, and then to LA, mm -hmm. and then we went to Chicago. Did and you know? Um, I have a Toguri. Uh, I well, they had a uh, grocery store. After, I read about Rose. Yeah, uh, yeah Tokyo Rose. Tokyo Rose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but she wasn't Tokyo Rose. Oh, she wasn't. No, yeah. Walter Winchell made that up just yeah. to sell newspapers. Really? Yeah, well, destroyed she was, her. Uh, she was uh, in a. She got bad, bad publicity then. Yeah. She did. She was They're destroyed. Propaganda. They eventually oh, pardoned her. She married a, so, a, some Romanian or different nationality. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's what happened with a lot of Nisei, right? Or a lot of people who well, were in those internment were camps. Well, somewhere there. Uh -huh. they, they married uh, Americans or yeah. GIs. My sister, my, my sister did. She went there as, um, pardon me, civil service nurse. And she met this uh, sergeant, but later... He became a colonel. Oh. Mm. She put him through school. She worked, and he went back to college. Mm. But after I left, the left Brooklyn Avenue, uh, I remember they sent me out 
they found out I lived out here. I had moved to Pasadena, in Altadena. My daughter's there. In Altadena? No, she's in um, uh, New York Hill, at New York and Hill. Oh, yeah? Right on the corner. Uh-huh, New York Are and you Hill? Tusk Tuskegee? Yes. Fairland? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Oh my yeah. goodness, you're uh, one of the living there. Yeah, we have one of the few. There's not? No, not too many of us left. Wow. We have a club across town and we How make, old we are meet. You? Yeah. How old are you? 88. Oh uh -huh. my, he's seven years older. Yeah. 88. Yeah. If you came when you was 88, you yeah. would have known everything. Yeah. Well, George, I opened a drugstore up in Altadena and I had, in, in 69. I went and made a uh, some, I made a, 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 a loan at SBA, twenty five thousand dollars in nineteen sixty nine, really? and uh, December they called me from Washington D.C. and told me that uh, my loan had been approved. Mm. Yeah, so for, what, they told me as the, soon as uh, yeah, drugstore? yeah, Wonderful. and they told me. Uh, Where did you uh, Huh? Where was your drugstore? In Altadena on Where's Lincoln that? Avenue. Yeah, Lincoln and, and, and Altadena Drive. It's called Walker uh -huh. Walker Pharmacy? Yeah, Walker oh, Drugstore. Really? I had it for 35 years up there, all by myself. Uh, it was an apothecary. I didn't carry a whole lot of front. Just just medicines and vitamins and everything. Uh, but I raised a whole lot of them and did quite well, thank goodness. Wow. Is your wife? Huh? Is she living your wife? No, my wife passed. Uh, she helped me open that drugstore, and she passed in uh, June of 2000. Oh. Mm -hmm. And we had, uh, when, I met, when I met her, uh, uh, I was working, oh yeah, I was working at, at on Brooklyn Avenue when we first started going to, uh, around together. And you together. sold your pharmacy? Huh? You sold your pharmacy? Yes, yeah. They, they came around. You didn't sell it to the Japanese, did you? We had no, a friend there. No, no, that was Matt's down there. Matt's Pharmacy? Yeah. And Matt's, yeah, well, I was up the street from Matt's. Oh. Yeah, Matt's was right there at, at the corner of where I lived at Figueroa in Lincoln. Oh, and wow. I still live there. See, his folks Lincoln, used to But live I knew there. Matt. Oh, well. wow. His brother lived there in, um, uh, right there on, uh, oh, God, what's that street? <laughs> a few years ago, I would have just come out. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's right, right around there. Yeah, uh -huh. there's a Buddhist church there. Yeah, right, they yeah, right up the back. street. Yeah, they lived in back of the Buddhist church. Is that right? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right up the street from where I live. Uh -huh. right? So we used to go on to Lincoln Avenue. Avenue all the time. Is that right? Uh -huh. Well, my drugstore was two blocks above that. Oh, then you're on top of the hill. Yeah, not quite, but uh, up to uh -huh. the, the next big uh, uh, street. You know, the Catholic church was up above there. Well, I was in the next block from from there. Uh -huh. From from West Coast, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's something. There's yeah. a Japanese family that I, matter of fact, one of their, their youngsters went up went to pharmacy, and they lived next door to me. Uh, 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 It'll come to you. Huh? It'll come to you. Yeah, John Odeco. Uh, yeah, I forget her name, but they. They have lived next to me for ever since I've been up there <laughs> for the past 40 years. And they still live there next to me. Yeah. Yeah, we've been here 50 some years. Too. Is that right? Uh huh. Yeah. Wow, so you've seen a lot of change over time. Huh? You've seen a lot of changes. Yeah. Uh -huh. We had a lot of Jewish people here before. Uh huh. And then they went to the valley and then they, we got Hispanic. Uh huh. Well, you know, when we were in Brooklyn Avenue, that was Hispanic at that time. Uh -huh. But that used to be a big Jewish neighborhood, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Really? Before, mm -hmm. before we went in the, in the pharmacy. It was. Mm -hmm. yeah. It used to be uh, Jewish. Uh, Brooklyn Avenue was yeah, because Brooklyn of, Avenue. there was a lot of... Oh, yeah, Brooklyn yeah. Avenue. Mm -hmm. They had canters there right mm -hmm. there across the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they, every time I go past it, they, they, they call it Chavez Ravine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Chavez Ravine. Yeah. Well, actually, you're right. Uh, but so I always call it, I say, oh, there's Brooklyn Avenue. So. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people still call it that. There's the Breed Street. What do you do? Um, I teach history at Cal State Fullerton. Yeah. And um, Dr. Walker mentioned um, your husband, Dr. Yam, a few times, Dr. Yamaguchi, a few times and said, oh, that's someone I would like to reconnect with. And I met um, Irene Furukia. 
Furu no, I have it wrong. Mm -hmm. No, it's Furukiya. Um, I met her. She came to my class, um, and um, she knows your nephew, uh. who's an optometrist. Oh yeah, Dr. Tommy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she said. Oh, he lives in, he's in the Pasadena, Tommy. <laughs> right? He's a mentor. A mentor. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But also, Bill Watanabe from the Little Tokyo Service Center tracked you down for me, oh. to for him. Uh -huh. Yeah, because he thought it was special to connect old friends. See, now, I thought it was because, see, my husband, I didn't tell anybody that uh -huh. was something new. <laughs> About four years ago, they were looking for a, a GI, a Japanese GI, for the, um, uh, what's that, the, um, that comedian, um, he had that patriotic call. Um, oh, oh, uh, to be Takei, George Takei? No, that patriotic call. Oh, oh, uh, Bob that, Hope. Bob Hope patriotic yeah. call. Yeah. They wanted someone to uh, be a model, so my uh, my granddaughter just has. She's the executive director of this company. She says, "Well, my uh, this uh, what's his name? This uh, Kent Twiddle does murals. Twitchell. Twitchell. Yeah. He does murals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he said, Grandpa, let's go down there and see if he pick you. So he she took him, and she he says, "Where your? Did they pick him? Yeah, so the big mirror, it's gonna be on, it should be done by now, it's been four years ago. Where oh. is it? On Bob Hope, it's at oh the entrance. Oh my God, on Figueroa. And my husband is sitting there, uh -huh. and Bob Hope has his hands on his shoulder. Oh. Uh -huh. That's cool. So he should be, it should be a done. I'll go event. check it out. Yeah. yeah. I'll send you guys photos. Mm -hmm. Well, my granddaughter is supposed to check it out too. Uh -huh. uh, but I'll go check it out, we'll okay. take photos for you. It's fun for us to do that. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's I, interesting. That's there's, beautiful. Yeah, he's there for uh -huh. one life for life now, for a long time. I used to so drive that. I, 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 I had a Corvette at that time. I thought that this is what it was for. Oh, no. Oh. I had a no, we just wanted to know about Corvette, a little red and blue Corvette. And I was a bachelor. <laughs> I, I, I was just going with the, the young lady and finally married. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, George had me learning Spanish over there, but he could speak Spanish all over yeah, the place. Yeah, that's why you know? he was put into it. Uh -huh. No, he had, had well, your, father, your parents had had a farm uh, down, where Brawley. was it? Down Brawley. towards San Diego? Brawley, Brawley. yeah. Is that where it was? Near the Salton Sea. Remember. Yeah, he taught me everything. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I said if I stayed there much longer, I would have really learned Spanish. <laughs> Hmm. I have to tell you a real funny uh -huh. experience, uh -huh. you know, when you were, he's, the company that I work for, Thrifty Drug, uh -huh. said, well, you have to go to East, you know, Solo, uh -huh. and work over there. And I was working, and uh, at that time, the client there were, well, 70 or 80 percent were, you know, Hispanic. Yeah. And so I spoke Spanish to them. Uh -huh. And then one day, one of the fellows, Kogija, came. He looked around, looked around, and, you know, didn't see me there anymore. And he says, Where's yours? Uh -huh. And he says, uh, going to Thrifty there, I was working there, uh -huh. because the client there was Hispanic, yeah. Asian, and, um, you know, uh -huh. all mixed up. Mm -hmm. And so when he didn't see me there, he says, well, where's George? You know, so he's around someplace. <laughs> and then that was sent to a different port where okay. there was... That's all. Uh -huh. What, what he's trying to say is that he told me the story several times, too. And so, that guy says, where's George? Oh, he said he went to another store. Oh. And then when that customer came in, he looked at him, he says, where's George? You know, and uh, he said, oh, no, he's been transferred to First Street, and from First Street, I went to every area that that had that plan. Uh -huh. And... Uh, 
So he came to one of the stores I was working in East LA. And uh, he says, Where well, were you, George? And I told him the story. And then, uh, and that same fellow came back to First Street, mm -hmm. you know, and they see me and says, Where's George? And, and, and uh, he was, you know, working at a different store. Uh -huh. So every area that had Hispanics, yeah. I spoke, see, uh -huh. and so. Uh, he kept looking for you. <laughs> yeah. you know, and, <coughs> well, I think that's just the story you want. See, before the war, you know, the Japanese were allowed, weren't allowed on the Pacific Coast. Uh -huh. So they sent us to Boston, see. I yeah, for the mm -hmm. concentration right. camps, internment mm -hmm. camps. Mm -hmm. Yeah.